Harden. All right, y'all. I'm about to ready. I'm about ready to spit some hot fire. I'm about ready to spit some game. All right, let me spit some game. Let me get into it. Anyway, man, I got an email the other day from a young man. He said, Tariq, man, I love your show. Me and my lady listen to your show all the time. I love everything you say, and my lady likes a lot of the stuff you say, but sometimes she says that you're a little too harsh as far as the words and referring to some of the women. Sometimes you use words like bitch, hoe, slut, and that's kind of off-putting to some women. But other than that, we love the show. And a lot of women say that. A lot of women will throw up the smoke screen about my language because I'm very blunt. I'm very curt on the show. I'm very straightforward on the show. And a lot of women will try to throw up smoke screens. Not all, but some. They'll say, well, Tariq is misogynistic. He's this. He don't like black women. Which is a crock of shit. Any kind of criticism means you don't like black women, which is bullshit. I criticize everybody. Nobody's above any kind of criticism. <clears throat> they say he don't like women, he don't like black women, he hates on this, right? He's that, he's this, he's that, he's mean, he's an asshole. Okay, asshole is relative. I may be an asshole. Who, to some, I'm an asshole. To some, I'm a saint. Who knows? But the thing is, <clears throat> I don't lollygag with the language. That's the problem with a lot of people. A lot of people are into self bullshit a lot of people are into delusions of grandeur a lot of people are into self delusion and if you're deluding yourself you're going to delude others you're going to become disillusioned and others are going to become disillusioned in you so i like to get back to the essence of what's what i like to just go back to the definitions of what certain things are we have a lot of people out here doing one thing and then claiming another and then people get confused about the definitions of what things are. Men and women are doing this. Now, a lot of women, they feel like, oh, my ears are so delicate. The words are so harsh. And the words are not harsh. The words are ringing with truth. The truth is what's harsh, not the words. So I just want to remove the smoke screens and just call things what it is because it is not the words. It's the truth that a lot of women have a problem with. So we're going to talk about some of the definitions of certain things today. Let's go back to the essence. Let's go to the survivor scrolls. Because sometimes I take for granted that a lot of people, a lot of my new listeners, and I have a lot of listeners. This show gets like 100,000 listeners a week. So I, I, I have to assume that everybody has not read the art of Mackin yet you know because there are a lot of new listeners a lot of you cats have read all my books like the art of Mackin, the mac within player be played the art of gold digging and my brand new book the elite way you guys should have all five of the books and i forget that there's a lot of new listeners and some of them just don't have all of the books people email me and they'll say Tariq, i got all three of your books not realizing that i have five books people five books and a dvd you get all of them on Amazon, by the way, or MacLessons.com for those who don't have none of them. But I have five books, people, just for the record. So let's go back to the essence. We're going to take it back to the art of Mackin. And we're going to get some of those definitions out the way. Well, hold on, let me get a couple of calls real quick, y'all. The phone lines are lighting up. Before I get into the game, let me let the momentum build up. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, this is NBA 2K calling out of Dallas, Texas. What's up with it, Flex? What's up, Pimp Juice? Y'all getting ready for All-Star, man? Oh, uh, man, you know what? I'm going to try to swing through and check it out, man. We'll see, man. We'll definitely see. I uh, definitely got to avoid the tricking, you know, the, the typical rundown of All-Star. Exactly. Hey, first, I had a quick question for you. Go ahead. How do you how do you maintain the confidence and the, the correct type of energy when you're doing the transition from a corporate slave to a hustler? The reason why I ask that is because I'm looking at a few business propositions, but, you know, I had experienced like a little brief layoff a couple months back. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to maintain that momentum. So what, what kind of suggestion can you provide? See, the, right now what you have is a fear of the, the not having a safety net. That's all that is, man, because when you work at a, a corporate job, that's like a little safety net. You know, you're going to get a paycheck every week, but when you work for yourself, there's no safety net. So you got to have 
extra extra confidence and you got to have a lack of fear because you have yourself to depend on and that's the problem a lot of cats don't know how to depend on themselves they don't know how to trust themselves they don't trust that they will be thorough so you have to have 110 percent trust in yourself knowing that you're gonna get your money no matter what so you got to create your own hustle and stick with it and i'm going to talk about that later on in the show about the the essence of what's a hustler so stay tuned What's bro. Up, man? thanks for the call man. i was also going to bring a few cats to the uh, seminar in houston man definitely so did you get your tickets yet no nah, i don't got them yet man but i'm gonna try like a busload of cats you man. better I'm bring them cats to go with me right now man go get your tickets now go to maclessons.com and get your tickets player i'm gonna see you in houston man thanks flex peace Man, y'all better bring y'all asses to Houston, man. We're going to have a good time chopping up some real game in Houston. All right, but anyway, let's get to some of these terminologies. Let me start with the guys. Let me start on the players. All right, now, fellas, let's look at the word baller. The word baller usually, back in the day, it meant a dude who had money, a dude who was out here getting his money, a guy who was stacking ships. That was a baller. Now you have dudes who are out here spending money, going to strip clubs, popping bottles, claiming that they're balling. That's not really balling. When you're spending a lot of money, that's more tricking than balling. So let's get that straight, first of all. You, you got song like balling, all that shit, popping bottle. That's not really balling. A baller wasn't spending that much money like that just to, to make friends. Because that's what a lot of dudes do. You out here spending money just so people are like you. See, like the old school ballers, they, they were fly. They had the jewels. They had the rides. They just show up, look fly, and leave. You dig? They weren't tricking and, and tossing money to everybody in the spot trying to floss. That's a sign of insecurity. So let's get that definition out the way. So now let's take it back to the art of Mac. And let's look at the terms players, pimps, and Macs. Because there's a lot of dudes out here trying to claim pimping a lot of guys trying to claim being a player a lot of guys talking about they macking so let, let's go back to the essence of the terms now let's look at the word player player is a dude who basically uses his mouthpiece to get sexual gratification from women all right that's what a player is if you saw that movie how to get a how to be a player with bill bellamy the movie from 1996 if you remember that movie the whole objective of the movie was him going around having sex with a bunch of women which is what players do that's what players do sometimes ain't nothing wrong with that I'm not I'm not saying this in a judgmental way but a player is a person who uses his game his mouthpiece for sexual gratification with women now let's look at a Mac a Mac is the person who uses his game and his mouthpiece to get sex money and status so the Mac uses his game in different assets and in, in different aspects of life. A Mac can go into a business meeting and, and get the same kind of results. A Mac is all about results, using his mouthpiece in his game to get results in anything he does. That's what a Mac is. A Mac knows how to get some money. A Mac can, can spit some game at a female and get some paper. A Mac can spit some game at a female to get sex. A Mac can spit game in a corporate setting. A Mac can spit game at a car dealership and get the best deal on a car. Mackin is all about getting power. It's a power thing with Max. Power is the main objective with a Mac. And when you have power, you get sex, money, anything at your disposal. All right, now let's look at pimping. Now with a pimp, it's very cut and dry. Now a lot of cats out here like I'm banging all these women. I'm a pimp. I'm doing all this. I'm pimping. I'm pimping my ride. I'm pimping, 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 pimping. The pimping is very simple, man. Pimping is a dude who is getting a woman of the night, prostitute, hoe, escort, what have you, sending her to get money from tricks and bringing all the money to him. That's what pimping is. No more, no less. If you are not sending a female to go break a trick and bring all the money to you, that is not pimping. If you're not doing that, you're not pimping. That is the definition of pimping, y'all. Damn all that other shit that y'all been hearing. Now let's look at hustler. The young man was talking about hustling. 
A hustler is a dude who's getting his money on his own in an entrepreneurial way where every participant in the endeavor is willing. A hustler is a person who's getting his money, be it on a, on a legal level or a street level, where the rewards outweigh, outweigh the risk. A hustler is getting his money in a way where the reward outweighs the risk and there are nothing but participants everybody involved is a willing participant in the endeavor that's what hustling is so if you got an operation going and everybody's down with the operation and you getting money on a consecutive basis that's hustling that's really all it is be it legal or on the street if you were you got a trap house going on and everybody's working the crackheads are happy the people under you are happy everybody's happy everybody's hustling that's hustling everybody's making money that's hustling not to advocate anybody getting a trap house but let's say you own a barber shop or something and everybody's working everybody's making money you rent out booths to different dudes these guys are making their money you're making your money that's hustling you're not depending on anybody but yourself that is hustling when you depend on yourself that is hustling now a lot of people get hustling and scam artists mixed up because a lot of stuff people are doing are scams and if you're scamming that's not hustling a scam artist usually has a victim in the endeavor if somebody's being victimized in your so-called hustle it's not a hustle it's a scam If somebody's going to be at a loss and you're going to be at a gain, that's not a hustle. That is a scam. If you go rob a bank, that's a scam. You go carjack somebody, that's not a hustle. That's a scam. You got to you got a situation going on where you breaking into people's houses, you're doing a burglary ring. That's not a hustle. That's a scam because they're victims. And when you have victims, that makes the whole block hot. Whenever you hustle on the streets and you leave a trail of victims, or not even hustle, whenever you're doing business on the streets and you're leaving a trail of victims, that makes the block hot. Victims bring in heat. A hustler knows on the street level, you want to avoid any kind of heat. That's why you avoid the dumb shit, you try to lay under the radar, you try to be low key, you just try to get your money, and then hustle your way out of that particular endeavor if, if it's on some street shit. You want to hustle and legitimize what you do, and you want to lay under the radar. Niggas who's on that rah-rah shit, you trying to be extra flossy, you, you popping bottles, and then you got motherfuckers robbing this person and that person, that makes the whole block hot, and it ain't got nothing to do with hustling. It's a scam. So let's get these terminologies together. Now let me get on the women. Before I get on the women, let me get a call or two. I'm going to get on the women right now. Hold on. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, what's going on, Rick? What's up, man? Who's calling? Chill. It's T-Money from Nook, man. I don't know what I came to your show, man. What's going on? What's going on, T-Money? How you doing, player? Chill. I'm good, man. My first qu my first two questions is, look, when you going to come out with the Mac Lesser radio show for the pitch? And also, when you going to come out with a uh, with a, a daytime talk show for like the TV stuff like that? Yeah, right? well, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm working with TV cats right now as we speak, man. So I got some stuff coming along, man. I, you know, I was gonna do it. I was talking to some cats at CBS about a year ago about doing some some television stuff. It was me and this lady named Liz Hernandez from Power 106 out here, and the the management company that I had fell out with the people at CBS, and I was right in the middle of it. So it was a whole bunch of bullshit. But I got some TV stuff coming out now. As far the what, about show, the the what, what, what about the pimping? I'm about to say that, man. I'm a, I got some players, man, that I'm going to get. And I'm going to have a special with all my players. I'm going to get probably um, Lee Mack, Gangster Brown, probably feel more slim, a lot of cats, and just spit that ism, man. So I just want to okay, make I want to make sure cats are mentally ready for all that. You dig? I'm waiting on it, man. I'm waiting on right. it, man. Thanks a lot. All right, man. Peace. But yeah, I got some TV stuff that I'm working on. I'm working with some cats right now. So y'all stay tuned. A lot of folks... I like, what's up with your TV show? We need a TV show from you. I'm working on some stuff. But yeah, have you seen TV lately? It's some goofy shit on television, man. My God. What's that show? Um, the Jersey Shore? God damn. With those horrible shaped 
Italian girls. Those some of the worst body having this bras I've ever seen in my life. Those bras have them dumpy SpongeBob bodies. Oh God, is it okay? Anyway, I digress. Let me get back on the game. Let me not get off on a tangent. I digress. Okay, let me get on the ladies out here. Let me give some of the terminologies for the ladies out here, since these ladies have a lot of complaints about what I say and how strict I am about my words. Now, a woman who is in a relationship who's trying to get money out of a dude, that is a gold digger. And there's nothing wrong with a gold digger. I have a whole book breaking the gold digging game down. So, gold digger, that's the first term. And I'm using sex terms with women because a lot of women use their sexuality as bargaining chips and as... um as marketing schemes when they deal with men so I'm using that that's why I'm using a woman's sexuality to define them in certain ways because a lot of women use their own sexuality to define them now when a female is having sex or giving sexual favors in exchange for money that's a hoe that should be cut and dry right The thing is, it's not cut and dry no more. A lot of women are using different terms to describe basically what a hoe is. A lot of people are running away from the word hoe because in some people's mind in the square world, the term hoe had such a negative connotation. So a lot of people try to do the same type of hoeish activity and put a, a, a different name on it, a cute little name on it. Like you have a lot of women who are strippers, strippers. Basically, that's a hoe. Strippers like to say, well, I'm not having sex. Oh, yes, you are. Most strippers have sex with clients, and most strippers have sexual contact with clients. If you're grinding on a motherfucker's lap, that's hoeish. But you have a lot of cute names to describe what hoeing is. You have porn actresses. That's a hoe. You have exotic entertainers that's a hoe you have adult actresses that's a hoe you have courtesans that's a hoe you have sensual masseuses that's a hoe ain't nothing wrong with hoeing I'm not even saying that to disparage anybody there's nothing wrong with hoeing but let's call it what it is and some of you dudes out there you better know what you're getting into situations with because you guys get out here with these women and they done set up and told you that they're an adult entertainer or they're an exotic masseuse and all this old bullshit and then you're trying to deal with them on some square trick shit but they still have that whole mentality and you're going to get whole results dealing with them so you better have some kind of game in order to deal with them correctly because a whole is a whole is a whole is a whole there's nothing wrong with that I'm not saying that in a bad way you just gotta know how to deal with them just like women a trick is a trick woman you better know how to deal with a damn trick these dudes got you thinking that they ballers and they got a trick mentality and once they get through tearing up your asshole they're gonna go trick with the next female so you better know how to deal with a damn trick if you see a dude and he's tricking he got a trick mentality you break that motherfucking trick and going about your business don't sit up here getting wiped up by the trick and you got babies by the trick and then he get through tan the lining out your ass and then going to the next female and you sitting around looking stupid talking about niggas ain't shit oh your choices ain't shit you better recognize what you're dealing with men and women now let's look at some other terms that we have here Now, a female who has sex with celebrities on a regular basis, that's a groupie. And I've talked about that on the show before. But then you have another term that they like to use for themselves. They like to say, well, they're vixens. A lot of these girls who hang out on video sets and hang around with celebrities, they're vixens. That's vixen is a groupie. That's all that is. Let's keep it in perspective. Now, if you have females who have sex for free... That's a slut. You feel what I'm saying? That's a good old fashioned slut. And the term slut is is coming back in style now. 
Well, in the words of Alexis Tyler, let me play. I them. don't know what kind of fucking mamas that we got today. I don't know what kind of fucking daughters we got out here. And they're not just my age, but I'm talking about these damn teenage girls. <laughs> you can tell their mom is a whore and a damn slut because the daughter is a damn dumb, backwards, wayward ass, double clutching, double dick sucking slut. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's what it is. See, a lot of women who are sluts, they try to put little cute terms on it. They try to say stuff that they're like they're sexually liberated or they're uninhibited. That they're taking control of their sexuality and all that shit. They're sluts. Let's see who's on the phone real quick. What's up? Who's calling? Oh, this is uh, Joe from Maryland. What's up, Joe from Maryland? How you doing, player? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Pretty good. Tari. Hey, man, real quick. I got a couple quick questions real quick, man. Are you still are you still coming to D.C., Maryland, or, or is the wrap for that? No, I, you know, I don't know when, but I do want to come to D.C., Maryland. I still want to come. I do want to come. Oh, uh, I don't know when. What's up? Like, you got a hookup out there or something? Um, like I said, man, I'm I'm trying to I, I go to um, Bowie State University, but I know a couple of people over at like Howard and like a couple of like the local community colleges. So real talk, I can go ahead and ask and try to look out for you because we really need you down here for real, man. It's a lot of tricking going on down here. That's true, man. And a lot of people want me to come out to DC, man. I get like about five or six emails Hello? a day for cats want me to come out to DC, man. And I really want to get out there and um, check on that for me, man. I'll let you. I'll keep you guys posted on that. Thanks for the call. What's up, all my DC people? I know y'all want me to come there, and I really want to come to DC. I wanted to come the first week of March. That was my thing. We wanted to leave Chicago and head right on out to um, DC. But man, we could not find a damn venue. I mean, I swear we looked in in DC, we looked in Maryland, we looked in Virginia, and I didn't want to go too damn far. I didn't want to, you know, go all off in the boondocks. But I mean, nobody had a venue available, so. I do want to come out to D.C. If you guys can, um, shit, we can try to get some organized for the um, end of March. I would love to come out there, spit game. So holler at me, man, and holler at your schools. That's another thing, man. You guys holler at those schools, and so we don't have to search all over town for a venue. We can use the school venue, um, the, the college campuses, man. Holler at them. They got budgets to bring speakers out, so holler at them. That'll make the, the, the load easier on us so we can go out there and spit. But I digress. But like I said, man, let's go back to the term sluts. Like I said, a lot of women use these terms to to dissipate what they really are. They use terms like I'm uninhibited, I'm sexually liberated, I'm taking control of my sexuality. They're just really sluts. They don't want to admit that. Nobody really wants to admit that, but it is what it is. You have sluttish behavior, you should be called what it is. Now, back in the 90s, they called them stanks. And back in the 80s, they called them skeezers. Y'all remember that term? Skeezers. <laughs> and back in the 70s, they called them freaks. You think they even had a song? You remember this? Y'all remember that? They had a dance called The Freak. Yeah, so... And in the 60s, they had, um, what was the term? Tramp. That's what they call loose women out here having sex with everybody for free. They call those tramps. And even before then, if you want to get real old school, they used to call them bed winches. And that's what we have now. A bunch of damn bed winches out here. Ladies, y'all acting like winches. Y'all stop being winches and get you some money, ladies. All this winch-like behavior. Anyway, I digress, y'all. That's been today's episode of the Mac Lessons Radio Show. All right, y'all. All right, I'm about to ready. I'm about ready to spit some hot fire. I'm about ready to spit some game. All right, yeah, let me spit some game. Let me get into it. Anyway, man, I got an email the other day from a young man. He said, "Tariq, man, I love your show. Me and my lady listen to your show all the time." I love everything you say, and my lady likes a lot of the stuff you say, but sometimes she says that you're a little too harsh as far as the words in referring to some of the women. 
Sometimes you use words like bitch, hoe, slut. And that's kind of self. You're going to delude others. You're going to become disillusioned and others are going to become disillusioned in you. So I like to get back to the essence of what's what. I like to just go back to the definitions of what certain things are. We have a lot of people out here doing one thing and then claiming another. And then people get confused about the definitions of what things are. Men and women are doing this. Now, a lot of women, they feel like, oh, my ears are so delicate. The words are so harsh. The words are not harsh. The words are ringing with truth. The truth is what's harsh, not the words. So I just want to remove the smoke means you don't like black women, which is bullshit. I criticize everybody. Nobody's above any kind of criticism. <clears throat> they say he don't like women. He don't like black women. He hates them. This way, he's that, he's this, he's that, he's mean. He's an asshole. Okay, asshole is relative. I may be an asshole. Who, to some, I'm an asshole. To some, I'm a saint. Who knows? But the thing is, <clears throat> I don't lollygag with the language. That's the problem with a lot of people. A lot of people are into self bullshit a lot of people are into delusions of grandeur a lot of people are into self delusion and if you're deluding you're off putting to some women but other than that we love the show and a lot of women say that a lot of women will throw up the smoke screen about my language because I'm very blunt I'm very curt on the show I'm very straightforward on the show and a lot of women will try to throw up smoke screens. Not all, but some. They'll say, well, Tariq is misogynistic. He's this. He don't like black women. Which is a crock of shit. Any kind of criticism, smoke screens, and just call things what it is. Because it is not the words. It's the truth that a lot of women have a problem with. So we're going to talk about some of the definitions of certain things today. Let's go back to the essence Let's go to the survival scrolls. Because sometimes I take for granted that a lot of people, a lot of my new listeners, and I have a lot of listeners. This show gets like 100,000 listeners a week. So I, I, I have to assume that everybody has not read The Art of Mackin yet, you know, because there are a lot of new listeners. A lot of you cats have read all my books like The Art of Mackin, The Mac Within, Player Be Play, 